Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we've done the first print on the TiVo Tarantula, so here it is. So it's another um, updated version of our spool holder that I've shown in a couple prior episodes. So this is actually a new version I've uh, done up, so there'll be more on that later. However, I wanted to take a just talk a little bit about the Tarantula. As you can see, we finished up the build. Uh, before we do that, let's go take a quick time lapse of watching this print, and that way you'll get a little bit of perspective of it printing. And then from there, what we'll do is we will go and um, come back and talk about the build process. So, time lapse. Okay, we're back. So um, we got the we got the TiVo Tarantula built, and so just kind of want to share some thoughts uh, on the printer. This is this is probably the actually the first full print of this. So uh, it came out pretty good. There's some adjustments to be done. Um, so, but let's talk a little bit about the build process. As I've covered out in a couple of the prior videos, the build of this actually was pretty enjoyable. There was actually a little bit of zen to building the unit, so I really like that. Um, definitely some quirks. Um, I'll put a link to the guy that I used, the, the, the um, Arcade Ed or something like that. He's got like about 20 videos out on building it, so I watched through those before I built this. And it does, he does an okay job of sort of explaining everything, but he even leaves some holes uh, in there. So I had to fill some of those in. Um, but anyways, it, it went together actually very good. And again, as I covered out in a prior video, I built it in modules and assembled it. Um, a couple things. So the extruder, or sorry, not the extruder, the hot end, it, it does suck. Uh, it's a $200 printer, and you get a $200 hot end while something falls off. And um, so that is probably one of the um, downfalls. Now it, it's okay if you're just for hobbyist prints, but it, this probably will be higher on my list to replace. So um, you know, again, 200 bucks. I, I don't have a big issue with it. I wasn't expecting the world, but this is something I would put on my list if you are going to get it to to change. Um, the reason for that is is the it, it, the way that the heat break works down here um, tends to get plastic jammed sometimes, or at least on this one it does, and so that's kind of irritating. But um, so you may have to take this apart when you change filaments, and that's what I've had to do because I, I ran one a print that failed initially more so because of um, the feeding through the hot end. Kind of a long story. Uh, but it jammed up the plastic and it was really a mess to take apart. So anyways, before one you might have a little bit of that, but it is what it is for a $200 printer. Um, but it, it, it's okay. As you can see here, some of the quality. Now, you can see I had a little bit of retraction issues that I have to adjust, uh, especially because it's a Bowden tube. So I will probably have to increase my retraction. I don't like to do that because I like to keep the retraction down as short as possible to avoid plugging up the hot end. Um, anyways, uh, I do need to increase it because you can kind of see here the stringing effect, especially when it would have to print this and then come over here and print this and go back and forth. It, it did uh, leave a little stringy. Um, also, I do have to calibrate the extrusion. Uh, now I've got it set out of the box for the 0.4 nozzle, 100% extrusion on uh, 1.75, and um, I think it over extruded actually a little bit. Uh, so I got a little bit of artifacting and things here, but eh, again, I, I'm not having heartburn for a $200 printer in its first print um, on a DIY build. You just know you'll have to do that. Um, also, the other thing is, you notice that this is printed back here, so. I don't know if I've got it messed up or the orientation is messed up because this is actually supposed to be turned the other way on here. So this is acting like this is the X and this is the Y. 
rather than this being the Y and this being the X. So I've got to take this cover off and double check. I think I have it on the right way. Now I've noticed some some people, and for example, Arcade Ed has his turn where it's reversed. So you know maybe I'm just screwed up in the orientation. But when I put this on, uh, I put it so you know this was the Y and this was the X, obviously. So I got to go back and check that. And you know no big problem. It print out, and so uh, the quality is is pretty good. Um, the overall resolution, very happy with it for being a bell-driven machine uh, and, and on uh, basically maker ra uh, rails, uh, does pretty good. The one thing that I don't like is this wiggle, especially when it gets going, it gets a lot of wiggle in it, so I'm going to have to work on um, something to take that out, Is and it does leave a little bit of, which you can see, you really probably can't see it. Uh, from your perspective here, but it does leave a bit of banding in the print uh, So that is something I'm going to have to deal with now. I put these brackets on here to um, Act you, you know as a little bit of stiffening agent laterally, but uh, Back and forth. I'm gonna have to come up with something and so I think what I'm going to do is print out some angle brackets or cut them out on the laser that will go down here on each side and hold it against the bed and then I notice on Thingiverse there's some other pieces to uh, lateral struts that go down here in this area on, on all four corners to tighten it up. So I think I'll do that too. Uh, but again, not you know it, it's not horrible, but it is a problem. Um, again, this isn't a very tall print. Didn't see a problem with the single Z-axis motor. I've had the the uh, the two up before with the single access motor which had a lot of problems I think one of the things that works better with this because of the wheels than the rods because there isn't so much tension torquing between each side um, I think if you do a taller print you might hit some issues but not a big problem um, extruder again for a $200 printer not bad not the greatest in the world a little bit difficult to get the uh, filament fed up into but once you do it works fine um, so that's all worked pretty good cable management's a little bit hokey I've, I, ha I'm, I haven't buttoned everything up I've got the cables inside here pretty much set uh, I didn't clean up some of these fan cables because I am going to change this around you notice I do have a blue wire sticking out here I am going to add a layer fan. I'm just waiting for the uh, M345s uh, to come to mount it on here. So it'll go uh, on top of here. And I got it off thinking first. I'll do a video on that when I add it. Uh, I'll probably do a video on several of the modifications I'm going to do for this in upcoming videos. Um, I haven't done much with this other than it sits on the table. I, I'm not sure how one would effectively mount it up here up top. Uh, or if that's a good idea given, you know, the shakiness of this. So, uh, uh, kind of questioning that. So this might just, I might make it a little thing to set it on the, the counter. Uh, the spool holder, not directly related, we did the spool holder in another video, worked great. Uh, the rolling is just fantastic on these bearings. And like I say, I'm doing a, a modified version over here, which will be even, even better. So, again, I'll have a video on that. Now, a couple things uh, I forgot to mention. So, first thing is, I uh, had a big problem with the, the, the compression adapter that goes on top of the uh, extruder, so I had to get another one. So, this is made out of some kind of funky white metal, and I mean, just a little bit more than hand tightening, and it broke off in there, plus, and the reason I was messing with it, is it didn't lock in the top so when I would pull it it sucked the tube down into the extruder so that was a waste so I had to order new ones uh, and they take the six millimeter uh, end so make sure you get the six millimeter end because I had a bunch of the larger ends uh, that actually go into the ex uh, hot end side which has got the bigger ends so you can kind of see this so I had to do that uh, the other thing is the heating element DOA so, when I, and that was sort of the problem when I went to do my first print. It heated up, and then within a few minutes, it um, stopped heating. And during that period of time, it kept pushing plastic before it aired out and just really jammed up the, the hot end. But, I, you know, 
I've got a bunch of these laying around, so that wasn't a big issue, but this did fail like 30 seconds into the first print, and you see I added a new one and no issues there. So these were probably about the two biggest things, so do expect problems and challenges uh, with this DIY kit. So, you're, you know, you're, if you're going to build it, you need to know a little bit. You, uh, it's good to have a multimeter to troubleshoot some stuff. Uh, aligning the uh, limit switches was actually pretty easy. You know, several people on the internet complained about it. Didn't have an issue there. It actually actually aligned all very nicely. Um, and that's pretty much about it. Uh, again, very happy with the first prints. The way they came came out for first prints. Um, again, I need to kind of tune this printer. I need to check the the motor orientations. Um, now I did make some modifications to the wheels that I do want to talk about. So now in the instructions I had, it had two lock washers back to back. On, on the videos I watched, uh, the guy was putting one lock washer inside, one lock washer. I, di I didn't understand what he was doing, so any why he would do that. So what I did is I measured the eccentric side and the non-eccentric side, and I shimmed it so they, they matched height-wise, because with the two lock washers, it was sitting cockeyed, you know, just um, you know, a couple hundredths of an inch, not a huge amount. Uh, however, it was so. What I did is I got found flat washers, kept the one lock washer for tension, and then found flat washers that brought me within a couple thousandths of an inch of the the eccentric side. So uh, that seems to work very well. Uh, all the all the wheels are running very very smooth, so I'm happy with that. Um, Again, I, I don't know if I covered it in one of the last videos. I, I'm not sure about making this too much bigger because of the, you know, it's it's riding on no more than a, a 20 millimeter rail here. And the more you have, the more torque, side torque it's going to have. Now, I think one of the things you can do is I think, of, well, I'm going to probably remove this box from here because you see how much it takes up. Because you can actually, you know, as the bed goes down, you could probably get another two inches here and two inches here, so you probably get another four inches on this eight inch. So you you could maybe get pretty close to twelve inches out of this, and you can maybe get pretty close to twelve inches this other way. So if you might recall, I wanted to get up to a twelve inch build area. I, now I'm not sure I can do that, um, but I might be able to get pretty close. And and I think in a uh, after I play with this for a while. Uh, I may give that a shot. The other thing I can do is if I extend this down, because notice these wheels, because if I go actually take it out, because I've got, so two, well, okay, so I don't really have as much as I thought. So I've got an inch, a little over an inch before I hit, hit this piece. So that would give me two inches. So that means I could get, get up to 10 inches yeah, because this is an 8 inch bed, so I get to 10. Uh, but if I go under these wheels, I can get almost, I can get pretty close to another 2 inches on each side. So I could get up to roughly a 12, and then I could get pretty close to probably 2 inches front and back here. So I could probably, in this configuration, get 12 by 12. And I'd have to give up some Z height, because I'd have to bring this down probably about 2 inches. Um, you know, so that the head will hit the bed before this hits the bed, because obviously the bed is going to be, you know, extended out like this, un you know, underneath there. So, uh, but that would actually be okay. So this is what I'm thinking. And, and what I might be able to do is if I get in roughly a 12 by 12 area, I might be able to get a full 12 inches diagonally. So, uh, we'll see. We'll play around with that idea. So... Anyways, I think I rambled enough. <clears throat> if you got questions, hit me up below in the comments. Um, hopefully, uh, you've liked this bit video and you've been following along. Uh, again, I'm going to do some modifications to this um, to improve it, just kind of like we did the Wan Hao, and that's sort of what we do. And so, uh, stay tuned for those. If you have specific ones that you think are good, let me know in the comments below. I'll give them a shot. Um, and hey. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, a lot more coming. Cheers, see you in the next one. Click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.